Is, is, I think it's a very valid question as to how do we avoid value traps, financials and everything will look good but the share price doesn't move. So uh, this is a very generic question. I think everybody can take their stand. I mean, we can start with uh, Shayong first. You want to answer this question first? Yes, um, value traps. Uh, so how I like to think about it, right? I mean, I mean I, I've, I've been a value investor, so I understand. I understand where I'm coming from. And actually, I can practice value investing my one, but at this point in time, it's really not a preferred approach. Um, but then again, to answer the question, right? Unconventional or, or, un, or uh, you might seem counterintuitive, right? But my, my take is that to avoid value traps, you need to pay a lot of attention to the down, downside, right? So put it this way, you're buying a company and you say that it's a value buy, right? Probably, probably, I don't know, maybe it's the PB ratio is great or, 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 or there's certain factors at play. But I think that in the case of the best value buys are the ones in which you can't really see the catalyst for value usually is not the financials. Usually you need to understand a bit more about the circumstances of the situation to, to get it. So, so one example I give right is usually some people will say, oh, this company, P V ratio is uh, very attractive. P V ratio is 0.5, uh, very, very uh, uh, attractive price to book ratio right? because it's way below the book value. And then, and, then, and then the question is, if you buy this company at a very attractive P V ratio, what makes so sure that the value will be unlocked? Is that a catalyst? And, and another question would be timeline, right? How long can you wait? So I, I think, I mean, to summarize, when I talk about uh, value, when I look at value investing uh, or, or value buy, I pay a lot of attention to number one is the catalyst, nature of catalyst, and number two is the duration or the timeline. There must be something there to, to really minimize the downside. So if I flip the situation around, right, catalyst, I'm sure, maybe 20%. Maybe you're waiting for Singtel to unlock their value by selling their GC. Number two, timeline, not sure, just wait. How long can you wait? So I already put it to two, two, two criteria for you to, to, to consider whether something is, could be a value trap or it could be a value play. Yeah, so that's my answer. Okay, my, my, view, of, my view of value trap is this. Uh, in the first place, I will try to avoid um, uh, selecting one. And the process of selecting one um, with uh, different financial ratios. Uh, let's say, for example, if the um, one of the critical uh, financial ratios we look at is the price to book, and assuming that this price to book are really, really low, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, the debt to equity ratios are really low, and, and everything all looks fine, and, but the share price is still going down. Um, and that's where I will dig really, really deep into uh, the business analysis. So it's like going back to what uh, XH has uh, you know, presented at the early of this uh, semi uh, webinar. He says, look at the company, what do they do? And we want to look into that part of that business. Uh, then I will also look into the last part of what XH has shared is basically the management of what they are doing. Now, with all these two add up together, and if it does make sense, um, and it's still classified as either a, um, a growth company or is it a, a fixed income, you know, dividend paid company, then I will still put uh, money into it. But then again, at this point of time, I will have to do my, my last, my, my very, very last, uh, what we call test is to go into to uh, the TA part of the business. Um, TA becomes a, what we call a final screen. And if, if the uh, stocks itself is trading at a very, very thin volume and the spread between buy and sell are perpetually, uh, you know, more than 5%, more than 10%, some even go to 30% kind of a thing, then it is okay that I would just drop this company because you think about it, um, in Singapore, there are more than 762 stocks to pick. In US, you have 3, close to 3,000 stocks to pick. 
um, you, you know, I don't really have to hug one particular tree and forget about whole forest. So, um, so yeah, that's basically how I look at, uh, you know, I, I try to uh, analyze a company and to avoid a value trap uh, to begin with. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, okay. Uh, Calvin, you want to add on? Avoiding mm -hmm. the value trap. <coughs> So value traps come in many forms. For example, <clears throat> uh, it might be a bit confusing for everyone, but I'll just share. Um, there are some businesses, you know, you always do business on credit, right? So that means you don't collect your cash immediately. So there are some companies whereby, you know, the revenue is growing really, really well. The profit is growing really, really well. But what you'll notice is that they, when it comes to trade receivables, right? A lot of receivables are not being collected. So that's one form of value trap. Another one of, form of value trap, which I think some people might be commenting quite a bit on um, Silver Lake Axis. The CEO will always use the listed company's money to buy other companies. Okay, but here's the question here. Here's the, here's the crux, is that the other companies is actually owned by him as well. So you're taking the company money to buy a company that's owned by you as well. So clearly there's a corporate governance issue. Usually shareholders who are smart they would discount heavily on such companies. Or for example, if you look at a lot of companies, Chinese companies that are listed in Singapore, why do they have such low valuation? Because their cash is not held in Singapore's account, it's held in China bank account. And all the auditor is doing to verify the figure is to, you know, just to have the bank manager to write a letter to verify that it's, it's there. And letters could be forged as well. So I tend to be very suspicious of companies that are trading at very, very low valuation. They tend to be very problematic. Uh, so one way to avoid value trade is just avoiding low PE company. I would rather look into companies with high PE that's growing rapidly, that is uh, performing. So uh, it's very different for value investing. That's why sometimes a lot of, a lot of value investors get the value trap because they just aim for low PE stocks. But low PE stocks are usually those who are who are very problematic, you have low margins, very weak ROE. So uh, I'm not sure if I'm able to answer the question correctly, but uh, that's just how I view the matter. Okay, no, no problem. Uh, John, you want to add on? Uh, when I heard the question, the first impression is, value track can avoid on me. If you can avoid them, we will be sitting here and talking about it already. Right? It's part and parcel of, especially if you are a value investor, you're going to get some value tracks. Right? That is what, you are, you are expecting this company to shoot up, but it just doesn't do. Okay, the second thing is that, you know, uh, if you read through Warren Buffett's letters and stuff, he, 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 his change in the mindset actually came from buying these candies and uh, uh, from buying some lousy uh, children departmental store before that. So you, you will realize that um, the very important thing is not, not that you have to be a growth investor or just look for very high valuation, but you at least need to have the wind behind you. Let's say you talk about powermatic data or whatever. You know, there's a 5G going and, and there's the trend of you coming back up. Or if you were to talk about Hong Kong land, so what is going on to Hong Kong land? What is going to be in the future for Hong Kong land? You see? If you cannot answer this question, nor can the management answer this question themselves, then it's probably not such a good idea to go for Hong Kong land, even though it's how, however cheap it might be, you see. Yeah, uh, maybe for me to add on, I, I think I told everybody in the group chat I sold a value trap today. Uh, so I probably I, I sold one of the my property stock today, um, making a bit of a losses. But that that's when you can't you realize that you are wrong in in, in your in your criteria, and then you, you realize that the the company is not just doing what you thought that they should be doing or they will be doing. Your change of thought is being broken, and then you. That's where you probably think that it's a trap, or it may not be a trap, but your fundamentals were changed. So at the end of the day, um, when all these things happen, uh, you, we should, I think investors should be should be aware of it. So you you all should probably um, start start to you know dig deeper and then try to answer the questions and then and then to see whether you all should still hold on to these uh, value traps or, or value buys. And I think to add on to what Xie Heng said at the start about you know, focus on the downside. Uh, it's important. Like I think in the, even in the chat, we also talk about a company called Sing Holdings. It's, it's an NC at net net. But after a while, actually today I sold, sold, sold it. I didn't make any losses, but it's fine. Um, you decided that what 
you, 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 you think about the catalyst, there's no much catalyst, yes, the next reporting will be good, but so what? Like, after that, what's going to happen? Can you hold on to it to another six or five years? Uh, five or six years, you can't, because you don't know what's going to happen after the next reporting. You just don't know anything. So for Hong Kong land, what do you know? Actually, I mean, people are asking about how, how about Hong Kong land. Hong Kong land is like, what do you know about what's currently happening right now? What's going to happen in the future? Do you know anything? If you are just thinking about all their book values and then you, you think that, okay, the book value are real. Think about this way. Uh, um, all properties can get revalued. All properties can get revalued down. In Hong Kong, the, the valuations are sky high. So it could be revalued down further. So, so that, there's a lot of things that, I mean, once you intend to buy a value, you have to think more about the downside rather than the upside. And for, for growth, if you want to buy something that, that, that you think will keep growing, you should, you should just buy something that, that, that just, I mean, that, that suits, suits yourself, I would say. Um, okay. Uh,